So coming down here, you can see that goes right into our little DMX decoder. Um, these things, when you get them, uh, I've ordered them several different sources, um, but they have a pretty clear little diagram right on the front here of what color wire is doing what. Um, so this wire on the top is our our DMX signal wire, which we have a ground and then a positive and a negative DMX signal. The other wires here are our power input. That's our 12 volt positive, 12 volt negative. So all I've done is I've wired these back to the wires in the Cat5 that I'm using to carry those on. Um, I've wired two outlets or two Cat5 cables to each one of these. That way I can daisy chain, so one in and one out. Um, and everything in the display is, is done that way. So here's our other one. This is 146. Um, so this one right now is what we have plugged in to our power injector and to our dongle. So we'll take from our signal coming in here to this controller and then it comes out on this wire. So I'll take another one of these little couplers here and uh, plug that in and then we'll plug our second string into the other side of that. And get them to clip. Okay, so now that's all connected out here to our second decoder on the end. Now, I wanted to show two of the different module types. Again, there's lots of different options out there. Um, everybody carries something. Uh, these are just the two that I found worked well for what I was doing this year. You got these little 3-inch um, RGB modules. They all come with four wires on it. You have a common positive and then three neutrals um, for each color. So you've got your, your yellow wire. In this case, the yellow wires are positive and then blue, red, and green are our negatives for each respective color. Um, again, every sample I get is different. These are red, white, green, and blue. Um, so you just have to try it to figure out what works. Um, these little node strings um, are what I'm using on the trees outside. Again, they're not digital. They're not, not pixels. Um, the whole string acts together. And uh, this is actually a section of string that went bad. So I, I just cut it out. So you'll see one of these nodes is like flaking out. Um, but I wanted to give people an idea of what these things are and what they look like. Um, so that's the two, two types that I'm using for this year. These look like mini lights. Uh, they're about 10 times brighter than a regular string of mini lights. Really, really like them. Um, I tried them with uh, diffuser covers. I don't care for the covers personally. Uh, they don't need them. They're, they really are brighter without a cover on them. Uh, if you're worried about them looking like Christmas lights or um, you know how somebody in their car is going to see them, I've got these just hanging straight like this in my trees. Nobody seems to know the difference. Uh, if you're going to use them on a roof line or something, I, I understand wanting them to look like a C9 bulb or something, but for you know, for what I needed them for, it just wasn't the right thing. So um, I'm running them just exactly like this, just as is. So that's all of our connections. All right, so now that we have everything connected down here, um, we're going to go in, and in order for Lightarama to communicate with our DMX dongle that's plugged in, we need to make sure that the COM listener is running. So we're going to run in here to Lightarama and click on control panel um, just to make sure that's running. You may or may not get a little pop-up that tells you control panel's running. Um, what that will give you is your icon down here in your system tray and it should also open up a little box that looks like this. Um, this shows that the uh, connection has been accepted on this is our adapter here, our A400GU46. Um, so now that is what LiDARAM is using uh, basically to, to talk to, to speak to our DMX dongle. So now that should be it. Um, we come in here as long as we have, yes, control lights is selected. Um, and just set our visible screen on our play range. 
we'll go ahead and we'll click play. So now these strings are doing what we've programmed them to. So you can see we're about to fade into our incandescent match, which is what these look like. So you see them do what we programmed them to. That's the white, into the red, into the green, and then a slow fade across into our incandescent. Alright, so if we want these to do something different than just a regular color fade, um, we can use any of the, the typical commands. We'll do a, a twinkle across there and grab a uh, shimmer. Um, make both of them shimmer. And then, you know, we can come in and do just little on commands of white anywhere in here. Um, just to give us some little pops. So, now that that's all done. Let's try another run through and see what that looks like. So you can see sequencing it, it's, it's exactly the same as anything else. Um, each one of these little decoders is one channel, one RGB channel here in Lightarama. And uh, it does, you know, whatever you're going to tell it, however you're programming it. Um, so that's it. So these, uh, these certainly aren't the only option out there. Uh, there's lots of different stuff available. Um, this is just what I happened to find that was going to work for what I wanted it to do this year. Um, so you can send me a PM with any questions uh, or email them all is available. Um, I also have pretty detailed how-tos on how I put all this stuff together on our website, uh, which is www.lightuplawrence.net. Um, so I hope that kind of helps understand um, how all this works um, and really just how easy it is.